If you are struggling with multiple data sets inside of one automation, then this video is for you. We're going to be going into detail about how you can write an automation in multiple steps that will put information into an Airtable database in multiple tables. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to build seamless automated systems to help them improve the efficiency of their businesses. As I mentioned, in this video, we're gonna be going into detail about building an automation that links multiple pieces of data all in one seamless step. So without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here. Now, the first thing you're seeing here is um, just an Airtable database, and we have some example data in here. And you'll notice that I have a contacts table that's linking to an applications table. So really quickly, let me frame the, uh, the thinking here. So we have an application that we have online, and we're saying, hey, fill out this form. After you've filled it out, we're going to uh, create a record or multiple records in our database. Now, there's two different things that we need to keep track of and they're individual sets of data. So one of those things is the contact, that is the person themselves. We need to track that information. Things uh, that we wanna include in there are phone number, email, um, you know, maybe the company they work for, things like that, obviously name. Uh, but there's another set of data that we need to keep in a different table, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But that second set of data is the application, so the answers that they fill out on that application. Now, why do we keep this separate? Well, the reason is these are two different data sets. And we can know that uh, most easily by just considering the question of, is somebody able to submit more than one application? If the answer is yes, then you probably want to bring you know, two different data sets into play here. So in this example, we're gonna run the contacts and we're gonna run the application, but we want those things to be connected. Right? And so we need to build an automation so that when an application is accepted, we create a new contact and we then link that contact to the response. Now, if someone were to fill out that application again, we would expect that we would not create a new contact, but instead we would link to a pre-existing contact when we created a record for their second application. So wrap your mind around that and then let's jump into you know exactly what this automation looks like so these are the you know the questions that we're asking on our uh, application and so we're getting information like you know how much are you currently making you know what do you want to make a month uh, how does automation help you um, you know what's your website pretty common questions for you know some sort of like application and from here what we want to do is link that to a person and this person we're going to need to use some sort of primary identifier most often we're going to use email because it's very unique right so let's take a look at what the uh, zap itself looks like so first and foremost someone enters a sub or fills out a, a submission on a form at our drop form now in this case um you know we have just some dummy data in here and we can review that here so these are the answers that you see currently in the air table just filling it out uh, but this is what we are going to be using. It's that email that the person provided. This is going to be a key uh, in making sure that we don't duplicate or triplicate records in the future. So once a submission is uh, received through our form, then what we need to do is in our second step, we find or create a record. And so this is accessible by using the find record option. And then of course, link it to your uh, appropriate Airtable account and then inside the options you'll pick the base the table and now is where we're gonna get in the search by field so this remember we're finding a record so what we're doing here is we are searching by the field called email so this is a field inside of Airtable where we are storing the email and then what we're doing is we're comparing that to this rep this record here now this is coming up a little funny let me go ahead and turn that down so uh, because there is, um, there is another uh, meta tag inside of our jot form, we need this extra uh, squiggly bracket, but 99% of the time, that's not going to be an issue for you. So you can remove that extra squiggly bracket and instead 
what you're going to be looking for is wherever you ask that question that grabs their email. And so we're going to bring that in right here. And that is what we're going to be comparing to the email inside of Airtable. Now, what Airtable is going to do, or, or rather what Zapier is going to do, it's going to look through our contacts and see if it can find any record that matches the email that's already been provided. Now we come down to this part here and we say, we want to create a record if it doesn't already exist. So if it can't find a record for this email, then what it will do is create a new record with the first name and the email that we received in our form. So that's a little complicated, but it's all wrapped up in that one step. Now we're only talking about the contact level. So the question that you need to ask yourself here is, when you bring in data, make sure that it lives at a contact level and not at an application level for this example. So that's actually going to come into our third step here. And in our third step, we're going to uh, create um, a new template here. And this is where we are connecting to our contact. So our contact uh, is here. And this is the record ID that we pulled in the second step. So remember, we're linking, if I go back to Airtable, we're linking our contact to something in the contacts. So first we created that contact in step two, and now we're linking to that contact. So these are those data points that we entered into our uh, second step. And we're going to go ahead and now link to that. So in order to find this, what we do is we come into our second step and we pull that ID you'll know that you're bringing in that record ID because it will always start with REC. And so you're telling uh, Zapier here that you want to link it to the record in the contact option. And then everything else that we're filling out actually comes from step one. And we can see that here pretty clearly in the answers. So again, this is a much more complicated step to uh, put to use, but it requires that you are on the pro Zapier plan uh, but the you know the best part of all of this is that you now have data that's talking to each other and you've architected it properly in multiple tables inside of Airtable. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.